Coming up on show 632, Tesla boosts the standard range plus charging, a new battery deal for the Chinese Gigafactory, and a manual transmission in an electric Ford. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily, the show for Tuesday, 5th of November. My name is Martin Lee. I've been through every EV story in the last 24 hours to save you time. You know what the ultimate time saver is? You know, it's myev.com. MyEV helped me make this show, and I'm truly, truly grateful for the gang there and their continued support as well. We wouldn't be able to spread the message far and wide around the world without the support of MyEV. Thank you so much. And if you're interested in what it's all about, or maybe you haven't been to the website in a while, don't you think it's about time you did? So let's start with some sales numbers from the UK. Pure Electric vehicle registrations achieved their third best ever month last month, October 2019, and the highest total outside of new registration plate month. See, we have new registrations twice a year, and they're always the biggest months of the year, according to the latest statistics from the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders. Well, according to Next Green Car, pure EV figures up 152% year on year, and the fuel type is 133% ahead of its first 10 months of last year. More than 28,000 pure electric cars have been registered so far this year alone. Over 54,000 plug-in vehicles are included in the wider figure. The Express newspaper said that the SMMT data also revealed that alternative fuel vehicles now made up 9.9% of overall UK car sales. That's a new record. And diesel sales are in freefall. Terrible decline is the phrase the newspaper uses. Plummeting, they say. A 28.3% reduction on data from just a year ago. The drop is the 31st consecutive month. Diesel sales have been in negative figures. If you are in the diesel business, here is my advice. Don't be. Okay, I mentioned this at the start of the show. Tesla's Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Do you own the Standard Range Plus? Would you like to buy one one day? Well, listen up. It's getting an increase in charging speed. Supercharging peak power is going up to 170 kilowatts. Wow, so cool. The latest over-the-air software update boosts the supercharging rate for the Model 3 entry level. For most people, for nearly everybody, it's unless you've walked into a store and got it off menu and got the small standard range. It's the entry level model for nearly everybody. It's a 50 to 70 percent increase from the 100 kilowatts that many have been seeing uh, prior to the update, which you need to look for 2019.36.1, according to Simon Alvarez at Tesla Rati. Tesla's release notes for the update were brief. Your Model 3 is now able to charge with increased peak rate power. At 170 kilowatts, Tesla wrote, the update will enable Model 3 Standard Range Plus owners to do long trips, have faster charging sessions, and of course a higher throughput of superchargers as well. Simon also points out that a screenshot of Tesla's release notes was shared online on Reddit by the member U slash Todd Z Man who noted that prior to the update, he was supercharging at 100 kilowatts. That's 456 miles an hour. Now he's got the update. He's charging at 170, and that on his standard range plus is 775 miles an hour. If you connect it to a V3 supercharger, of course. I'll pop a link to Tesla Arty in the show notes. And staying with Tesla, they've done a deal, and it's a big battery deal with CATL, that big Chinese battery maker. They're going to be the supplier for cars made in China from early next year. And the company are in talks, both companies are in talks to expand the relationship globally, according to people familiar with the matter, and reported by Bloomberg. Following months of negotiations, the companies clinched a non-binding deal after Elon travelled to Shanghai at the end of August and met with the chairman of CATL for 40 minutes. Though a final agreement is expected to be signed next year, there's no guarantee that will happen. Uh, the South Korean battery maker won't have exclusive rights to be the battery supplier to Tesla. And people familiar with the matter said that, of course we know, you and I know, Tesla have more than one eye on the future when they'll be their own battery maker. For now, they need the likes of Panasonic, who've been their exclusive partner until now. CATL and others, but there will be a time in the future when, 
I can imagine, because Tesla love that vertical integration, as I believe they call it, where they control every part of the process to drive down costs to increase efficiencies. Now, on yesterday's podcast, we talked about the Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, wanting better incentives. And the very next day, here is the news. German automakers and the German government agreed to increase the incentives for EVs as they attempt to accelerate the transition away from the fossil engine, says Automotive News Europe, a so-called environment bonus for pure battery electric cars. The ones that are priced up to €40,000, that's going to be raised by half to as much as €6,000, almost $7,000 per vehicle. And the auto industry will continue to cover half the cost of that. The subsidy does mean that a mid-range version of something like uh, VW's ID3 will cost around €24,000, €25,000 in Germany. Analysts Evercore said in a note to investors, Germany is closing in on Norway for European leadership, with almost 53,000 fully electric cars sold this year. Let's talk Ford and sports car enthusiasts sometimes don't like electric cars because there's no manual transmission. There's nothing for you to do with your hands when you're driving an electric car. Well, of course, there's lots of things to do when you're driving an electric car, but Ford has hinted that they may put a stick shift on an EV. According to Engadget, they've partnered with Webasto on what they're calling the Mustang Lithium Project car. 900 horsepower, electric motor, full battery, six-speed manual transmission. So you can drop the gears without spewing emissions, they say. And there's over a 1,000 uh, pound-feet of torque always available. The power is possible because of cutting-edge technology. They've used an 800-volt battery system like the Porsche Taycan. Hey, here's some good news that comes from Twitter. Surprise, surprise. Elon's been tweeting. Elon's confirmed that when the new Model S and X come out late next year, you know, plaid mode is going to be out late next year, uh, the new Model S is going to come with a bigger battery, according to Electrek. The new flagship sedan is going to have a new powertrain and some new performance hardware. It's going to have plaid mode. It's going to go even quicker. And Elon has said that when the car is out the end of next year, the powertrain will not only have three motors, but it's going to have a big battery pack. Now, the rumours are that by the end of next year, they will be using the 2170 form factor for battery cells. Elon previously said that they could max out at 120 kilowatt hours on the platform, the size they've got available. But that was a long time ago. And, you know, a lot of battery tech has been developed since then. So we'll see. What do you think? 130, 135, maybe? And what do you think about range? Current range of the Model S in the UK, got it got increased, didn't it? 379, I believe it is, uh, for the long range Model S. Could we see mid 400s of miles? I mean, efficiency is getting better all the time. I'm just, I'm just asking, what do you think? Let me know about any of the stories on the podcast anytime with feedback. Final story today. Automotive designer and entrepreneur Henrik Fisker has officially disclosed details about his company's upcoming EV plans. Fisker is going to debut with the upcoming, what they say is affordable, upscale electric SUV in coming months that's going to compete head-on with Tesla, reports Manish at Future Car. The battery-powered SUV is called the Fisker Ocean, and the company will hold a private event and a global unveiling on the 4th of January 2020. The event will be live-streamed from the venue. Henrik said the Fisker Ocean will be a sustainable, luxury electric utility vehicle designed to incorporate recycled materials. The flexible lease program they will launch will be offered without any long-term contract, and that will avoid the high cost of personal vehicle ownership. Earlier, uh, the designer pointed out the SUV's price would start under $40,000, the same price as a Tesla Model Y, if you like. As of yet, how that price point of less than $40,000 will translate to what the CEO's point is about a hassle-free subscription service. We'll have to wait and see what the monthly costs are look like if you are going to be a subscriber, if you like, to the Fisker Ocean. More details as we get them. Well, let's get on to our question of the week this week with myev.com. What do you prefer when it comes to 
encouraging more electric cars on the roads. Do you prefer the carrot or the stick? The carrot being incentives to drive EVs, the stick being penalties for polluters. And I mean, the last couple of days, I've given you a couple of good examples. Today, we talked about raising the incentive, money off cars in Germany. 6,000 euros, almost $7,000 off the price of the car. Nothing to do with claiming back next year's tax or anything. Money off the car. That is the carrot. Or, like yesterday, we told you about a city in the UK called Bristol, which is banning diesel cars from 2021. Well, imposing heavy fines if they go through the number plate detect detectors during the day. That is the stick. Penalties for polluters. But which works better? And what do you prefer? And no, you can't have both. I'm being mean. you got to pick one. What's more effective? Let me know. Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on the YouTube show or Facebook. Thank you to 255 patrons of the podcast because you make this show happen. And my premium partners are Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby and Avid Technology. Well, the archive gets bigger every day. Literally. 631 previous shows in there. A ton of interviews as well. Uh, some good stuff in terms of the interviews and the specials we make. And the new shows are all in there as well. But if you would like to get a brand new podcast dropping into your feed, your podcast inbox or whatever you like to think of it as, every single day, hit subscribe. This is a free subscription to get this show. Please spread the word far and wide so that more people can learn about EVs. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you soon. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>